Do you ever get short balls and go, oh, because it should be a ball that you look forward to. But you know if you get a short ball, you might not be putting away the way you want to, meaning that you're going up there, you hit the ball, it's going in, but it doesn't have enough spin, it doesn't have enough pace. It's kind of a lot of times like you're nervous because you don't want to miss it. It becomes where now, if you get a short ball, instead of thinking, hooray, because I got an opportunity to attack, you're going, oh no, I have to move forward. And that's so many cases for so many players. And so what happens is they wind up not taking those opportunities and just sit back and rally and rally and rally and rally and rally and rally forever. So maybe someone misses or maybe they just get tired. We don't want that for you. So in this video, I'm going to give you three tips to make sure that when you get short balls now, you dominate the short ball. No more poking short balls in. No more hitting and hoping. It's hitting and dominating. And so let's get started. Tip number one is first of all, realizing where your ball is going to be hit by you. And so what this means is start calling your balls when you're either in warm up or like I'm going to do in the, with the ball machine in a second, start getting a knack for feeling where your ball is going to go. How you do this is starting to pay attention to where you hit to three different things. First of all, how does the contact feel? When you're swinging, do you feel like bunched up or does it feel good? Or do you feel like the ball just left your strings or does it feel like, oh, it's on there forever? It's so, so important because this is qualities of the ball. I mean, if I hit a ball that I'm jammed up, more than likely the result is going to be a shorter ball, which means I can't or I probably won't receive another short ball. Another thing to look for is the height above the net. Okay, the higher above the net, the deeper or the more it's going to push my opponent back. The more it pushes my opponent back, the more likely you're going to get a short ball. And so this is another way of thinking about it. Like that, hey, if I hit the ball low over the net, mm, probably not going to push my opponent back. They're going to probably be aggressive. If I hit the ball high over the net, hmm, opportunity. So these are things you've got to start paying attention to. The last thing is really making sure you pay attention to how your opponent's reacting when they receive deep balls. Some high, higher level opponents, as they receive a deeper ball, what they're going to do is lift the ball up to play defense. Okay, and this is good to know. Some other players, maybe lower level players, if they get a deep ball, they won't move back. They'll try to half volley it and whoo, that smells opportunity to me. And why is because if a ball's coming in deep and I try to just take it off the bounce, that's a very difficult shot, even though we see the pros do it a lot. But when we see the pros doing it, they're trying to use their hands to get the ball deep again. So it's a very, very difficult shot. Another thing, if you don't see players moving back, especially when you hit high balls, they're going to probably take a ball that's outside of the strike zone, meaning it's going to be uncomfortable, meaning that more than likely it's going to be short. These are all what I call red flags to get you ready to be aware that you should probably do what? Move up two steps. So anytime I hit a ball and I know that it's deep, I know my opponent's not going to move or it's out of their strike zone or they're reaching for it and they're struggling, I start to take two steps forward. And why this is important is because it's the first thing you have to understand to hit a short ball. Being aware of when you might get one to be ready to move up to it. Because so many times what happens is we create an opportunity but we don't see it so we sit on the baseline and we don't have the opportunity. So with this, when the ball machine feeds me a ball, I'm going to start calling my shots. So if I hit it higher, ooh, that's not that bad, but if I hit it higher, and I'm just rallying just right now, like that's gonna probably push my opponent back. So if I were to hit it higher, I would take two steps forward. Now I know I'm inside the service line to show this, but I want you to get the idea if I hit this shot, see how that's weaker, the ball's shorter, or if I'm too close, weaker, shorter, but when I'm in a good position, I can consistently hit the ball deeper, which means more than likely, oop, that's a little too deep, but more than likely, ugh, like that, I'm gonna push my opponent back compared to a weaker shot that's gonna bring them forward. So if I'm pushing them back, I should equally move forward two steps. And that's the first thing you need to look for if you want to start attacking more short balls. The second thing is this. We have to prepare the right way. And this is so, so important. I see so many players when they're running up to a short ball, they literally just run to the ball. They don't prepare the rack at all. And when they get there, it's an absolute mess. I mean, they just, if you're the ball, I'm just running to you. And then they get there, it's like, oh, what are you going to do? Well, that's the wrong way. The very first thing, if we've already taken the two steps forward, because we see the opportunity, we want to start preparing our racket. Now, this preparation by using my unit turn here does two things, which is super, super important. One, it starts to tell my, or by having my racket out here to the side of my body, it tells, communicates to my feet where I need to be. So, if I have a ball like this, and the ball's here, it tells my feet where I need to be. If this ball's here, it tells my feet where I need to be. It helps line this up, and that's so crucial because it helps your feet be in the right uh, position. 
The second thing, which this will help you with racketed speed and making sure you can now dominate or penetrate the court, is it creates separation. And this is one thing, or sometimes I call tension. And tension between your shoulders and your hips, meaning I'm coiling here, which creates tension that when I get up there, I can release. A lot of players will do what we call a unit turn. They'll turn to the side just like this, but it hasn't created any tension. If I do a unit turn just like this, okay, well, sorry, I'll do it this way. If I do a unit turn like this, I've created tension. But here's the sneaky little problem that happens. It's creating tension because when I'm doing this, there's separation between my hips and my shoulders like this. But the moment I do my unit turn, I have tension, but I turn to run to the ball, I've released this tension and now my shoulders and hips are facing the same direction. So I don't have as much tension, I wind up arming the ball. So the key is when I do my unit turn and I start running, you see how I'm now really pushing my racket back a little bit more. So my shoulders are facing this way, my hips are facing this way. And so when I get to the ball, I have more tension to now release into the ball, hence creating more racketed speed. And that's the key to dominating the short ball, is that if I can get up there in the right position with that tension, I can now rotate and create the racketed speed I want to make sure even if the ball is low, I can create enough racketed speed to make the ball go up and then come down. How we're gonna work on this is when the ball comes, really making sure that you're using your left hand to push the racket back. So many players will release early and kind of do this. No tension, tension, zero. We want to create tension, create the tension. And so what I want you to work on is when the ball's fed and I get the ball, I wanna make sure I'm creating tension as I step forward to hit the ball. So I'm gonna do it incorrectly for a second, which is meaning when the ball comes, I'll create tension, but when I step forward, there's not that much tension because my body's facing the same direction. Now, you can see I'm going a little deeper, creating more tension, which now I can use to release, ooh, racket face, tension, ah, there we go, to release and make sure that even if the ball's low, that I can hit it because I have more racketed speed. And that's why creating tension and doing your unit turn is so, so important. The third key is this. Where are you aiming? Yes, you, where are you aiming? Are you aiming for the baseline? Oh, don't do it, don't do it, it's a trap. Don't aim for the baseline. Aim halfway between the baseline and service line. Give yourself some margin. Again, the approach shot is to approach, not win the point. And so the key is, when I'm hitting this approach shot, I'm not aiming for the back of the baseline or two feet inside the baseline. I'm aiming halfway between the baseline and service line because the approach shot is really to put pressure on and then get me in a better position so I can now finish the shot. And with this mindset, yes, will you hit winners? Totally especially if you start creating tension, getting up there early and seeing it, you'll probably be able to hit a lot more winners. But the goal isn't to hit winners, it's actually to force your opponent to go for a harder shot. And the only way we can do that is making sure that we make the ball. The only way we can do that consistently is making sure that we have enough margin to make sure that we're not actually putting more pressure on us than our opponent. And the way we wanna do this is now managing the racket face. You saw earlier when I hit a ball and it flew, I said racket face, because my racket face is too open. And so now, the next drill, is that I wanna start managing my racket face, making sure that it doesn't open too much, but then my path creates more spin to bring the ball down to the court. And to do this, all we're gonna do is set up and put everything together where even in this position, when the ball comes, I'm gonna make sure I get under and I'm managing my racket face by not changing my grip, but really making sure that I'm just adjusting the angle of my hand. So here, you can see now it's landing in the middle of the service line as I move up, okay? And so, unit turn, a little bit of a shank there, I gotta watch it, okay? Ugh, there we go. And so now you can see how when I'm moving up to the ball, I can create this tension and release, and I have plenty of margin. One other little thing that we can add to this to create more racket at speed is when we get to the ball, getting lower. So I get lower and I push against the ground. And by pushing against the ground, I'm using some ground force to now accelerate my racket a little bit more. Now the other thing, that I'm not really gonna talk about in this video is after we hit the approach, we wanna keep moving forward. So I would hit the approach, generally off my front foot, and then keep moving forward through the ball. And now, what's happening is we're putting more pressure on our opponent, and we're making sure they always have to hit a ball. Because tennis is about not making mistakes and making your opponent feel like they have to hit winners. It's one of those basic things that we forget because we're thinking so much about the highlight shot, but what we really need to be focusing on is how can we put more pressure on your opponent? So, if this video is helpful, the next thing you need to understand is 
how to hit a volley. Because if I'm approaching, I'm not trying to hit a winner, I need to hit a volley. And so the keys to understanding about what's important with a volley is right here. Watch that video. Don't go anywhere else. Go watch that video right now.